This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a GE gas dryer that is not heating. It does spin, but it won't heat. You want to make sure that you have your temperature setting on heated dry. There's one called uh, fluff air that has no heat and that will create a problem of having no heat, which is easy to fix by turning the dial. But in this case, when I tested it on the heated selection and I went around back to feel the exhaust coming out, it was just cold air. So I know there's something wrong with one of the internal components that's not letting it heat up. It could be an igniter. It could be the high limit that protects it from overheating could also be the primary and secondary uh, gas valves or gas coils but they're all pretty easy to work on so just testing it again on some different settings on the dial like the time dry seeing if there's anything wrong with the controls but it seems fine so I got it unplugged I'm gonna push it on these two clips at the top so I can hinge the top out of the way and then using my multi-tester I'm gonna go in the upper back right corner, there's a little yellow high limit. I'm going to put my probes on there to see if I hear a beep. And it does beep, and that means that that has continuity. So that is not blown. That it was blown, that would also stop it from heating. I think it would also stop it from turning, I believe. So I'm going to remove this modular connector that brings power to the front of the dryer. And I'm going to remove the front panel. There's a couple of Phillips head screws here that are about six inches down on the left side and on the right side. Once I get those screws out, I can go ahead and grab the top of the front panel and pull it toward me and it will re release a couple of clips that are holding it in there. So I just yank it toward me, and I have to lift it off of two little clips at the bottom. And now that I have that out of the way, I have really good access to all the important parts inside the dryer. My suspicion is there might be something wrong with the igniter, so I'm going to use my continuity tester to test to see what the ohms of resistance are on the igniter. So it lives back inside the uh, silver cone we were just looking at, inside there. And pretty easy to get to. I'm going to go ahead and grab a pair of pliers to pull apart this electrical connector, this modular connector. It's bringing 110 volts to the igniter. I'm going to set my continuity tester. I'm going to put the probes down into the modular connector, the back of it, for the igniter. It's important that you have these sep separated before you do this test. And I'm just going to look at my meter to see how many ohms of resistance it shows. And the meter shows that there's no resistance. That means that the, basically the igniter is broken. It's kind of like a wire and the electrons don't have a path to flow. It's like an open circuit. So I definitely have a bad igniter. I'm gonna, in this case, I'm gonna use my fingers to push it off of a spring clip that's holding it on. Sometimes you have to remove a little screw that's holding it on, but this model is just a spring clip. So the igniter doesn't look too bad. I can't see an obvious break, but I can tell from the meter that it is broken. I'll pull the spring clip off of it because I want to reuse that. And I do happen to have an igniter with me. It's a very common dryer igniter that's common to a lot of different models. Just testing again by putting my probes on the connector, still get an OL, which means it's just an open connection that it's basically in effect a broken wire so that electrons don't have a path to mm -hmm. flow through. Mm -hmm. This is the new one. 
let's test this to see what we get. I'm gonna put my probes in the back of it and see how many ohms of resistance we come out with. 50, 50, 4.6. Okay, so that we know that one's working. Brand new. Has a different kind of a look to it also. All right. So we tested the high limit. That worked. We tested the igniter. Showed it was bad. So we'll go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to put the, new, the old spring clip on the new igniter. And I'm going to put it back on the metal plate that's holding it. I'm basically going to slide it back on. Be careful that you don't bang up that shiny igniter against any of the metal pieces because it's really fragile. So just take your time. I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to push in and wiggle with my fingers to get it to go forward so the spring clip goes up over that metal bracket. Got it in there pretty good. So I can go ahead now and connect the power coming to the igniter. I want to make sure I get this seated as far together as it can go. While I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and replace these primary and secondary gas coils because they're really cheap and they're easy to replace. I just got to pull a couple of Phillips head screws. They're basically electric solenoids using a magnetic field. They pull up on a pin that allow gas to flow into uh, the combustion chamber. And if they get weak, the flame doesn't stay on long enough and you don't get very good results. Here's the part number for the primary and secondary gas coils. So I think it's only about 20 bucks for these. There's a skinny one I just put on where the terminals are at the top. And then there's a fatter one with the terminals at the bottom. I'm going to grab that older gas coil now and I'm going to go ahead and separate it from its electrical connector. Sometimes they're on there kind of tight, so I'm going to wiggle and pull apart those two things. There we go. There's the old ones off. And this little round thing here, I'm pinching but you got to make sure that that stays on that post when you put on the fatter one. Sometimes it comes off with the old gas coil. I'm going to go ahead and put on the bracket that holds it on. And I'm going to wiggle around the gas coils until their little white indexing point sticks up through the top of the, of the um, bracket. There's one, there's two. That helps me know that I have them in the right place. I'll go ahead and add the Phillips head screws back in. So these are real easy to change. Get those tight. And I'm going to go ahead and put the electrical connectors back on. The skinny one has two terminals on the top. And the fatter one has three terminals on the bottom. I have to just wiggle, get them lined up and wiggle those on, make sure they're fully seated. And we're good. We have a good igniter. We have good brand new gas coils. We have a good high limit up in the upper right hand corner in the back that we know is good it's not tripped because we had continuity and we're just going to go ahead and reassemble it we'll get rid of some of the lint that's in there i'm sorry i don't have all the reassembly but we're basically going to do the front panel in reverse put on the bottom clips push it shut and then add the screws back in and then add the modular connectors together and close the top just cleaning out the little filter housing there too before i put the filter back making sure that's nice and clean and it end, ended up working really good heated heated back uh, within about a minute it was full heat and that's all it needed was that new igniter but the gas coils is just a good thing to add while you're in there because they go out about every four to five years so we set the dial turned it on I went back and I could feel the heat coming out the back 
I also added the uh, vent tube back on it too. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.